Many employers in Texas and around the country are bringing about changes in distracted driving by adopting policies that prohibit employees from using cell phones while driving during work hours, whether they are in company vehicles or, on their, or in their own. We've invited Daniel Goodrich, the, the safety manager at Texas-based Answorth Trucking, to talk about his experience implementing a distracted driving policy at his company that has employees on the road many hours a day, some driving very far distances. Dan and Answorth Trucking were recognized earlier this year by the National Safety Council with the Texas Employer Traffic Safety Award for their commitment to a company culture that emphasizes safe driving every day and every mile. Leading the conversation about employee practices on distracted driving will be Karen Puckett from the Texas Department of Insurance. Karen is the Director of Workplace Safety for the, divisions, for the Division of Workers' Compensation. She is responsible for state outreach efforts and programs that promote safe and healthy workplaces in Texas, and that extends to safety when workers are out on the road. Please welcome Karen and Dan. In 2014, we do the data collection for the Bureau of Labor Statistics in Texas. And in 2014, 531 people died on the job and did not go home at the end of the day to their families. That's 531 people died on the job in Texas. 46% of those people died in transportation incidents. This is the leading cause of work-related fatalities in our state and in the country. And in Texas, the second leading cause was contact with objects and equipment, which, you know, people getting struck by or caught in between or, or um, under equipment or objects, not motorized vehicles. So that was 76 people, and the leading cause is 243 people. So there's a huge gap between what you would normally think being an occupational hazard and what's really happening out there. So driving itself is a very dangerous task. It's probably the most dangerous thing that most of us are ever going to do on our jobs, and we do it with some regularity. The, the challenge is that 78% of these transportation incidents occurred on a roadway. They were a roadway crash. And in Texas, the Occupational Safety and Health Administration is the safety regulator but they don't have jurisdiction over most roadway crashes so there isn't necessarily a governmental body regulating some of these incidents or talking to employers about driving safety as an occupational hazard so that's what we're trying to do at the division is is have those conversations with employers to to change their perspective on how dangerous it, it really is to have employees in the vehicle um you know we talk about financial burden to an employer a uh, legal burden to an employer but it's also you know affects your greatest asset and that's your employees um, so with that I would just want to I'm happy to be here with Dan today to share some of the practices that they put in place in his company which has a lot of truck drivers but some of these notions can be applied to other types of workplaces other types of drivers so uh, Dan if you could just tell us a little bit about your distracted driving policy sure we developed a policy uh, a couple years ago uh, relating to our drivers and operators using cell phones and uh, technology when they're operating a commercial vehicle. We wrote this policy uh, this year and it addresses all technology while operating a, a commercial vehicle, including GPS, uh, iPhone, iPad, any Blackberry device and things like that. Uh, because of the liability uh, involved with what we do every day, it's very important that we take the time and the effort to, one, write good policies for our employees to follow. Number two, that we educate our employees with the importance of following these policies and what the ramifications will be if they don't. In this case, it's loss of life not only the person that's operating the vehicle, but possibly somebody else's life. And this is something that uh, we never want to have happen in, in uh, our industry. However, it does every day. Distracted driving, I feel, is something that um, 
we, we see all the statistics on it. We see it every day. But when we go out and drive on the highway and you see how many people are distracted around you when you drive, you'll find out it's more like 80% of the vehicles that are on the highway are not paying attention to where they're going. Because of this, we have structured a very intense training program during our orientation, remedial training when we have an incident with a driver uh, through our behavior-based uh, uh, safety program. If somebody reports one of our drivers that's using a device when he's operating a vehicle or violates any of our policies or procedures or safety practices, <coughs> We bring the driver in. We have a, a uh, very advanced uh, truck driving simulator uh, in our company. I usually put them through a commentary drive on the simulator to see what their driving habits are, what, uh, you know, how they're, they interact with the simulator. And, and then we go back over our policies. Also, uh, they'll meet with other management members. Uh, we will usually do a write-up with that employee reprimanding them for what they do. If this happens two or three times, depends on how severe uh, the violation is, uh, they'll lose their job. As a company, we have to enforce the policies. If you do not enforce your policy, if you don't back up, if you don't practice what you preach, the policies aren't worth the paper they're written on. It is important that you take the time to uh, allow your educational team, your managers, your supervisors to take the time and provide remedial training for your employees. It's important that you enforce this every week in your safety program. Most companies have safety meetings. We have a safety meeting every week. Uh, every Saturday we have a teleconference call, phone conference call. We expect our managers and our drivers to be there every week. Uh, we document who's at the meeting. Uh, sometimes we'll have customers or vendors on the meeting as well. Uh, we go over different things that uh, happen during the week, any incident, accident we've had. We talk about the root cause investigations that we've done, what could have prevented this, what we need to do in the future to prevent it. And uh, anytime we have a road-related incident, thank God we haven't had any major crashes in a long time and we want to try to prevent this. So being proactive means you have to practice what you preach. Even in your safety meetings, when you preach this to your drivers, if they see your supervisors violating those practices, if they see management violating those practices or the owner of the company, you are not setting a good example for your employees. Your employees will follow what you do. They, they uh, really want to do the right thing out there. Uh, truck drivers, we all, they all want to be the best of the best. <clears throat> I've been a truck driver for over 36 years, and to me, personally, being the best of the best was something I've been trying to achieve my whole life. And I don't know if I'll ever get there, because there's a lot of good truck drivers. Dan, you talked about educating your employees through training and communicating your policies to them, you know, through training and weekly meetings. How do you, you know, in your industry, it seems like it would be, a lot of people might say it's difficult to have a zero tolerance policy where drivers who are on the road most of the day, that's, that's basically their office, they're not allowed to communicate with a cell phone while they're driving. How do you, um, how do you communicate with drivers during the, their work day? We have a system in the vehicles. Most trucking companies have this now. The industry is headed towards electronic log systems, uh, GPS tracking. Most all trucking companies, even small ones, have that now. And with our GPS tracking system and our e-log system, uh, the driver has a screen in the vehicle that monitor, he's, monitors his uh, daily progress with the vehicle, uh, his hours of service and compliance. Every time the driver stops, he, he's required to put an entry in there, change duty status, or make a note of what he's doing. Now, when the vehicle's in motion, if we need to contact the driver, we send a message on his uh, Teletrack system. It flashes up on the screen, says please pull over when it's safe to do so and call dispatch. When that happens, um, we know it takes a few minutes to get a truck off the road. 
uh, we try not to distract the driver only in case it's something that's really urgent. Uh, our, our drivers are sometimes on the road for uh, 10, 11 hours a day. Um, it's not every 10 minutes, so we need to contact this driver to get updates. We have GPS tracking. If you don't have GPS tracking and you're using the phone to keep up with your employees of where they're at, where they're going, when they're gonna be there, our customers, they're, they're, they wanna know, we have to update them, you're putting your employees at risk. It, it's uh, every time you do that, you're playing Russian roulette. The risk today invol involving distracted driving is severe. I'm, I'm sure everyone's heard of a company out of Mississippi had one of their drivers that was involved in a crash in Florida and killed five nursing students. Uh, this is gonna be a precedented case where the management of that company is being prosecuted for criminal charges. We're all looking to see what comes from this. What, the, what is gonna happen now is in the enforcement community is gonna start holding management responsible for their employees' actions. Now, it's so hard, you cannot monitor uh, uh, somebody that's driving a vehicle every day. We don't have cameras in the vehicle where we're watching everything that they do, and we don't have robots out there driving trucks yet. Because of that, we're prone to being liable. People make mistakes, and distracted driving is more than a mistake, it's a habit. To break that habit, you have got to reinforce your policies within your structure. And what I mean by reinforcing it is you need to practice what you teach. There needs to be teeth in your policies where you hold your employees accountable for the mistakes that they make and that they learn from those mistakes. They're also supportive with your employees knowing that you have their back if they're doing the right thing. So you talk about habits. A lot of safety advocates would hope that if, you, if employees are used to not using their cell phones or electronic devices in the vehicle while they're at work, that that behavior would hopefully transcend into their personal lives and that of their families if they're influencing friends and family. So do you see this happening with your employees? It's hard to tell right now. I haven't had a lot of feedback with our employees with that. However, I do know from my personal experience the driver training that I've received through the years. The things that were important to me as a, as a vehicle operator, as a driver, I would also stress the importance of that with my spouse and with my children. Now, fortunately, my children are grown up now. If they have families of their own. Uh, my son grew up in a trucking school. He learned more about driving than most people probably ever will in their lives. Uh, and fortunately, he saw the results of poor driving behaviors uh, through a, one of his friends that was killed when he was texting. Hmm. How does Ainsworth combat other types of distractions in the vehicle? I mean, cell phone use is so prevalent that that's a serious issue, but there are lots of things that can distract you in sure. the, in the um, vehicle. Part of our policy includes uh, not operating a, a vehicle when you're engaged in stressful or emotional conversations while driving. Um, we also reinforce that with our orientation training uh, about eating when you're driving. Uh, if you're not paying attention, period, you're prone to have an accident. It, it's the, the, the key factors are involved with driving are visual search. Do you see your environment when you're driving? You're not gonna see everything in your environment. Uh, the doctors have shown us today that we see very little in our environment when you drive. Mm -hmm. But it's important that you train yourself to see the important things when you drive. You need to be looking in the right place at the right time. Based on the environment that you're operating a vehicle in, if you're looking in the wrong place at the wrong time, you're more than likely gonna be involved in a crash. And if you're looking at the floor, trying to pick something up off the floor, or looking at the dash, or some type of device you have in the vehicle, the more you do that, the more apt you are to be involved in a crash and possibly lose your life or kill somebody else. Yeah. 
What are some things that employers should focus on if a crash does occur in terms of incident investigation and root cause analysis and right. trying to determine <clears throat> what, what happened? Now, this is something in the industry that I would like to see more of, uh, especially with law enforcement community. Uh, the statistics we have as far as distracted driving are influenced by uh, the laws that were broken. So what we do in law enforcement is try to structure the case so that uh, the, we can defend it in a court of law. Now an improper or illegal lane change in uh, Nueces County is one of the most common crashes, one of the most common causes of crashes and it has been for the last year. However, to really investigate that, if we check that driver's operator's phone records, oftentimes you would see where that operator was on the phone, talking on the phone or texting even during the time that crash happened or just prior to. So we don't do that. Nobody does a root cause analysis hardly to see. Now, all of our drivers use company phones. We don't contact them on their personal phones. We use only our phones. Anytime we have an incident, we check our phone records to see uh, if, if we had somebody on the phone when, uh, when they were operating the vehicle. Also, dispatch uh, is getting in a procedure of checking to see the vehicle's not moving, too, uh, before they'll uh, you know, receive a call from a driver. So there, there's, there's a lot of things that need to come into place to, to help your employees uh, be in compliance with your policies. However, when it comes to your cell phone use, everybody knows how difficult it is because of the society that we have today and how addicted we are to that drug that um, it's a tough road to hoe. It really is. I don't care how good you are at, at building policies, enforcing the policies, you have to change human behavior. And that only re is the result of good enforcement procedures, follow up with remedial training, making sure that your, your employees are aware of the rules, aware of the risks involved with what they do, and that when they make mistakes that you, you enforce that. You have teeth in your policies you hold them accountable. Yeah, if, if, you, if your employer requires you to drive on the job or other employees in your organization to drive on the job, they need to have an occupational driving safety program in place, just like they would have any other safety program within the brick and mortar of, their, uh, you know, of your business, hazard communication, emergency plans, lockout, tagout, those kinds of things. You should also have a program that focuses on occupational driving. And one of the key components of that program, obviously, and, and Ainsworth is doing a great job at this, is making sure you're addressing distracted driving issues and, and what your expectation is for your employees that they don't use these kinds of devices while they're operating a vehicle for you. and the training needs to be ongoing and consistent. It's, it's a, it's a behavior, you know, trying to change behavior is not going to happen if you send an employee to defensive driving once every couple years and say, I've, I'm done, you know, I've, we've taught them and we've got our, our safety plan in place. That, that's a component of it, but it doesn't really fix the problem. And as we've heard this morning and, and from Dan, you know, having rules and policies in place and enforcing those, changes behavior and then what becomes habit in the workplace can you know transcend into their personal lives we hope well thank you so much Dan you appreciate Fair. it thank you